Two muffins are sitting in the oven. One says to the other muffin, it's really hot in here. The first muffin says, holy S, a talking muffin. My name is Victor Ashley, and I'm a real estate agent out of Seattle, Washington. You can reach me directly by leaving a comment below, and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Or you could also get a hold of me using the con uh, the con my contact information in the description. And while you're at it, please hit subscribe or uh, leave a follow. Uh, because I really appreciate all your support. Uh, it takes me about an hour to put these together. And hopefully this uh, information and data is important to you because it's important to me and my friends and my clients. And that's the reason why I share this every day. Um, so again, thank you very much. And let's get started. So uh, if you watch my video previously, uh, I covered the uh, 98034 Kirkland area. And I have the hypothesis that um, there was a decrease in... Um, average equity on the homes in, on market by 23%. Now that was only using uh, the first 15 days of data of March. Uh, and again, that's the first through the 15th of March this year versus the first and the 15th of March from last year. Now, I wasn't exactly sure how close that data was gonna get, uh, but I wanna get into it to you uh, for you today. So let's just uh, get over this uh, right now and hopefully uh, you found this enjoyable. So uh, if you're not familiar where Kirkland is, Kirkland is actually located south of Kenmore, Bothell, and Woodenville. And this is also to the northeast of the Space Needle. This is about 16 miles northeast of the Space Needle, and this is uh, right along I-405. And this is just south of the Bellevue-Redmond area. In Redmond is the uh, Microsoft campus, just so you're aware. And also in Seattle is where Amazon's headquarters is, is at as well. So not only do we have a large tech sector in this area, but we also have like a bunch of uh, other little tech startups that are in this area as well. Uh, Kirkland is one of the suburbs that people like to live in. And I wanted to get into uh, the housing changes uh, this year versus last year in it, uh, just so we could uh, cover our bases. So now that you know where Kirkland is roughly, let's get into the sales from last year. So last year, between the 1st and the 31st, um, a contract was accepted and closed. And when that happened, the, it closed the sale. What it looked like is money was exchanged for a uh, title and then the keys were exchanged and then the home got recorded at the courthouse. And then that person uh, became a homeowner at the time. Uh, at the same time, uh, the sales process takes, you know, roughly 30 to 45 days to close. So typically the contract was actually accepted in February and it closed in March. Uh, I just wanted to give you a quick rundown of what it looks like, uh, but it does take a little bit of time and it can uh, be lagging data just so you're aware. So March over March, uh, this is what we got from the first March, uh, the first of March through the 31st of March in Kirkland, uh, we had 146 sales. Uh, that seems like a really big number. Uh, I do want to uh, just preface this. Uh, there was a condo, uh, a complex in the Tonal Lake area that came online. And a lot of people uh, started buying in that area. But by my rough count, it only accounted for about 27 of the homes, uh, just so you're aware. Uh, the average home uh, being sold in this uh, March of last year was uh, unvalued. Uh, $923,000, uh, two beds, one and a half bath, and it was about 1,300 square feet, but it was only on the market for 11 days. That came out to $729 a square foot. And uh, just so you're aware, again, I did tell you, uh, but this was more on the condo side of things uh, from what I can tell. Um, there was definitely a, a larger amount of condos that I did notice on this. But at the same time, uh, the single family and uh, townhouses uh, were in here as well. So going into this March, though, March 2023, the first through the 31st, let's see how close we got um, to the 146 that sold last year. Uh, we had 52. So that means that we had 94 homes that did not get sold this year that got sold last year. Uh, this is interesting, too, because if you looked at the previous number of 923,000, and then you look at this number as uh, 1,018,000, you're going to think that it's a $100,000 increase. Well, it's not because the square footage cost uh, actually went down. So we were at $729 uh, a square foot last year. This year, we're at $579 a square foot. And what that comes out to is a home that was on the market 
instead of 11 days, it was on the market for 33 days. It was three beds instead of two beds. And uh, it was two baths instead of one and a half bath. And it was about uh, 1765 square foot. Now I took the two sizes of homes and I averaged them together and I came out with 1524. And what I did is I then multiplied it by the 1729 from last year, and I multiplied it by the seven uh, by the 579 uh, this year, and I came up with the value of the home if you sold it last year versus if you sold it this year. And what I came out was pretty interesting because I have it right down here. Uh, so if you were to buy this house and it closed and it was done and you got the keys, last year you would have spent uh, $1,111,000 on the home. Uh, this year though, if you were to buy the exact same house, exact same uh, size and everything like that, it would be roughly $883,000. And that comes out to a $228,000 difference in one year. And that comes out to a percentage of 20.5%. Now this is kind of interesting because in the last year, a lot of things have been happening, but at the same time, the interest rates have increased. And because the interest rates have increased, I also uh, did the math on the uh, mortgages and the mortgages were roughly the same size. Uh, both were about $5,400. Uh, there was only a $6 difference in my math. And again, I'm not a mortgage guy, so I might be doing it a little bit wrong, but uh, I just wanted to give you an idea of this. Um, but your purchasing power was roughly uh, affected by $230,000 and your mortgage stayed roughly the same, and that's because of the higher interest rates at this time. But hey, Victor, what if life happens? You see this video right here? What if life happens? Um, well, I'm glad you asked, because in that video, I actually went over it, and here's an idea too. If you bought this house in the last year, and you turned around and you wanted to rent it, uh, and you um, you know, called me up and you said, hey, Victor, I wanna rent this thing out instead of selling it right now, uh, some life uh, events happen. I need to move somewhere else, but let's keep that equity building. Um, the rent would only bring in roughly $3,100 a month. Uh, and that's actually a $2,300 loss. Um, so that you're going to be losing a sizable amount of money each month. Um, so each month it's thirty it's $3,100 a month coming in, but going out it's $5,400 a month. And that's an issue uh, if you're going to be renting out the home instead of selling it. So again, in conclusion, I just wanted to go over our March data uh, so you're aware of how much uh, things have changed year over year from last March to this March. And at the same time, I'm still waiting for the official numbers to be announced by the MLS, uh, the multiple listing service in this area. But uh, from what I can tell, uh, prices have decreased uh, by 20.5%. And that comes out to $228,000 uh, for the average home. So if this kind of information is important to you uh, or you find this content helpful, you know, please reach out to me uh, and I'll be happy to help you. Uh, and as always, it was a pleasure working with you today and I hope you have a fantastic day.